Darktable 4.2.0 is out now, and in this video, we're going to look at the new features. Let's go. Hi, and welcome to episode 122 of Understanding Darktable. We are continuing our look at the new features in Darktable 4.2.0. Next up, some cameras record lens correction information within the EXIF metadata. The lens correction module has been enhanced so that it can extract this data and use it to correct lens distortions. So for this, I went and grabbed an image from our recent road trip around New South Wales with Paula and James, something where I was shooting close to the subject. If we go to the lens correction module and turn it on, we can see that correction method is using embedded metadata. Uh, you also have the lens fun option. Uh, but you saw that when I turned that on, it lightened up the edges to remove some natural vignetting of that lens and uh, also sort of warped the images or the, the pixels a little bit to correct for lens distortions. So yeah, that's a new feature in the lens correction module. Next up, Darktable is now able to read and write JPEG XL images. And don't be confused, XL does not mean extra large. Uh, this is a new format, and if we go to the Wikipedia page, uh, we can see is a royalty-free raster graphics file format that supports both lossy and lossless compression. That's kind of new for JPEG. Um, it's designed to outperform existing raster formats and thus become the universal replacement. But if you come down here to the section on naming, JPEG from the original Joint Photographic Experts group, the X being part of the name of several JPEG standards since 2000, JPEG XT, XR and XS, and L for long term. The L was included because the author's intention is for the format to replace the legacy JPEG and last as long too. We'll wait and see whether or not that actually happens. So yeah, so support for JPEG XL. I must admit, I didn't even know about that until 10 seconds ago. Uh, I had to go and look it up. And uh, yeah, I guess I will hunt out that format and see just how compatible it is with existing devices. Uh, I've not had any experience with it yet. I'll let you know how I go. Next up, processing and utility modules have been altered so that if a module is not entirely visible when expanded, it will be automatically scrolled until the entire UI is visible on screen. For users who currently use the scroll to the top when expanded preference setting to achieve this effect, this change may provide a better alternative. As part of this change, a new animation effect has been added when expanding and collapsing modules. The speed of the expand collapse animation can be controlled via a preference setting under miscellaneous duration of UI transitions. Set this to zero to disable the animation. And if I was to grab something like Color Balance RGB, which is a notoriously large module in terms of its screen real estate, Watch what happens to the color zones module above. See how it just all slid up as the module expanded so that all of the module could fit into the current view. Previously, part of the module would have been hidden off the bottom end of the UI and you'd have had to scroll to see the bottom part of the module. So that's a nice change. Thanks devs. Next up, the pixel pipe caching functionality has been completely overhauled. More cache lines are used with an improved hit rate while controlling the total amount of memory used, leading to a significantly faster interface. I'll leave that to your own experience to determine whether or not that's made any difference on your machine. Next up, the slideshow has been rewritten for a better user experience. Uh, a small preview is displayed while the full image is computed to provide feedback to the user that something is being done in the background. Well, I've tried it and I'm not seeing that. If I was to just go Control A, select all these images, and let's go Slideshow, I don't see a preview of anything other than my first image. And of course, we're not in Slideshow mode until we hit Spacebar because, yeah, that's intuitive. 
So now the slideshow's running, but where's the preview that I'm supposedly seeing? Mm, yeah, don't know. And it'll just get to the end and then it'll say end of images. So yeah, that's the slideshow. Whether that's an improvement over what we previously had or not, I couldn't really say. Not a feature I ever use. Next up, a new drop-down menu has been added to the top filter bar to allow filters to be easily added and removed. Some range widgets have been removed from this list as they are not easily readable on the top bar. Okay, so what does that mean? It's this little icon up here in the top left. And from here, you can remove any of the existing filters that are there and you can use this drop-down to add any other filters that you would like to add to this bar across the top. So if I decided I wanted to include aperture, I could add aperture and is that that one there? Yeah, there you go. So we can add images of any given aperture and we can click and drag to create a range. So that's the aperture filter, which I'm now going to remove. So yeah, so that's the new uh, little icon to add or remove filters to the top of the central part of the user interface. All right, we'll wrap it up there and I will catch you in the next one.